So today I thought I would like to do something slightly different. If by slightly different you mean almost exactly the same as last week, except this time with the Sega Genesis. So I have something involving serial, something involving the terminal, because we almost always seem to involve the terminal, because that's what we do here, and uh, yet a Genesis. So let's get straight into it and I will show you what the hell I'm talking about. So what are we ranting about today? Well, as you can see, I've got this Genesis here, which is my baby. I was a Sega kid. Now you know my affiliation. So lots of love for this guy and uh, lots of embarrassing Sonic nerdery from my childhood days. But moving past that, what am I talking about today? Well, let's start with kind of an ill-fated project that I have sitting over here that was kind of the thing that kicked this all off for me. Um, this was supposed to be a homebrew ROM cartridge uh, just for fun because I was like, eh, I don't feel like buying an EverDrive and, you know, I have parts around, so why not put them to good use? As you can see, using that same point-to-point -point Kynar construction that I love so much. Um, but there used to just be two, you know, EPROMs on here. Uh, I think it was equivalent to a 512K with everything that I had on there. And, uh, you know, I could put columns on there and it worked pretty good for a time. But as you can see, those uh, sockets are made up of a bunch of sockets because I didn't have the right size that were clipped up and then kind of reassembled to fit the chips that I had. And uh, yeah, then I decided to Gorilla Glue it and forgot about the expansive properties of Gorilla Glue. And that got into all of the pinholes and just ruined the whole thing. So it was a fun project that worked, you know, briefly. Um, those pins are, you'll see it on the, on the next thing. Well, I don't know about the next thing. On one of the things I'm about to show you, uh, this is a connector to an actual uh, Genesis PCB for a cart because um, it was easier than trying to find a proper edge connector because I don't have one and I don't feel like getting one ordered. And that was the easiest way. So that was the uh, genesis of this whole thing, <laughs> if you will. Following on from that, we get into what I would say is properly the beginning of this project. Now, this is not the first one of these that I have built so far. But uh, as you can see, this whole tangle of wires is, uh, it's basically got a plug on one end. And let's ignore this bit for a second. And it's got a plug on this end. And uh, you may see in a minute here that this is actually kind of backwards from what you might expect, because that looks an awful lot like a controller connector, right? Well, keep that in mind. What is this? I'm gonna start by looking at this. There is a port on the back there, and I'm going to hold this awkwardly because I have a microphone on the other hand, because I have a decent microphone and no stands because I left them in New York, because I said to myself, when will I ever need to use a stand for anything again when I moved? Uh, yeah, and here we are. So as you can see, there's that EXT port on there. Um, only earlier Model 1 Genesis's have that. Genesis's? Genesi? But it's kind of useful for dev purposes, because what it is, is it's a third controller port. Exactly the same as the other two, just at a different address. And uh, you can do controller port things with it. And of course, the controller port is very flexible on the Genesis. You can do all kinds of I.O. You can put it into a like GPIO mode, where basically all the pins are individually controllable. Or you can put it into a serial mode, where it literally acts as a UART. I think it can only go up to like 48... Yeah, like 4,800 baud, I think. But still, that means it's more than useless. So what does that mean for people who just have a Genesis? Not much. There's not really much that used that. I think there was a modem, maybe. Again, not doing research, because that's my style. I figured that needed to be corrected. So what this cable is, let's go into what the actual weird circuitry on there is. That is a Max 232, which I love using in so many things. <laughs> that was on my single board computer. Uh, that's on here. Um, level conversion for serial is my bread and butter, apparently. Um, but if you'll notice on the back of here, that is a female port. Uh, for reference, the Genesis ones are male ports. So this, this ain't gonna plug into there. This I'm actually using in lieu of having a proper DB9 connector uh, for serial purposes. Um, so that's a bit ironic. This comes from like an Atari or some kind of controller adapter for the old school controllers that I had no need for. Um, I don't think it was anything important. Um, I didn't break a controller, so just FYI. And this end, which is an actual uh, DB9 plug cable doodad uh, that I had to take the whole shroud off of and everything. This is the side that goes into the Genesis. So don't just go trying to plug DB9s into there. Uh, firstly, the pinout is different, pretty much totally different. Uh, it is not like a standard IBM PC kind of serial port thing. Um, so this is non-standard. And you will need to look at a pinout. And 
it's it's a little weird to do because they have the names for some of the controller pins that are different in different docks and then they tell you what the names are and how to control them but not which pins they are the names of the pins in the documentation is actually not exactly the same as the names of the pins on all of the pinouts you'll find online because the pins may be called different things in different circumstances. It's all super confusing and I'm not going to share that with you because I don't have time. Um, it's going to be a whole thing just me trying to edit together a video with secondary sound now. So uh, my apologies about that. But that's what this is. It's a Genesis 2 serial cable that can plug just into regular uh, RS-232 and this is just a uh, serial, serial uh, USB dongle thing, probably just an FTDI in there and uh, I use that with my Linux laptop to connect up. So that's part one. How is that useful? Yeah, I went back to the ROM cart thing again. I have a uh, cheap, easy ROM cart that I can't remember the name of right now that I do development with that is fast and easy to use. Um, this is not, this is just uh, the silly project that I'm going to talk about today. So what's going on here? So obviously that Genesis card connector that I was talking about that plugs into this board. And then these are these are the same kind of RAM that I'm using in the video card of my homebrew computer. And then these are EEPROMs. As you can see, they're A and B for the low and high. And what you've got going on here is when the Genesis starts up, it boots from these EEPROMs, which have kind of a, another ROM monitor on them because I cannot get past writing ROM monitors. It is just too fun. But it does a kind of cleverish trick where it boots from these, then once these have booted, the code in here uses this logic here to remap these into the low memory. The 68K boots from some vectors that are in the low area of memory, so they need to be in ROM for this thing to boot up at all. But I want to put the RAM in low memory so that I can write cartridge images to RAM and then boot off of them. And I just thought that'd be a fun project for development and stuff, you know, just having a cartridge that, uh, firstly, I can easily, well, on the fly upload new code into here and restart it right off of this uh, going over the serial connection because this monitor runs over the serial connection. This bank switching logic, I've forgotten exactly how it works, but it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, I think the first time, I think it may be a write to the ROM locations, triggers this to flip a D flip flop from zero to one. And that signal remaps through some logic uh, the chip select signal, so that usually the low chip select signal is going over here, and then when uh, that signal goes high, instead of the chip select going high, or actually technically going low here, uh, on the low bus accesses, um, it goes low here. So it does kind of like a multiplexing of the CS signal based on the status of uh, flip-flop in here. That is then in turn based on whether or not you've attempted to write to ROM space. Um, after that, it sticks. You can't flip it back, but it allows it to boot up. And then the ROM actually does that flip as soon as it starts up and throws itself into a higher spot in memory so that it still keeps running and that you can jump back into it if you want. So it's clever. This thing works really crappy because the serial is slow, so uploads are slow. Um, it's really not very practical, but it was, again, another silly fun project. So let's just take a quick look into it working. One other thing probably worth showing is that there is this small LED on here that shows the state of that flip-flop which controls the mapping of the ROMs and the RAM. Um, you can actually tell whether this is working um, because when it comes on the mapping defaults to uh, that light being on which indicates that the ROM is in the low memory area and when that turns off it means that the ROM code has done that right to ROM area. Again, I think, I haven't looked at the ROM code in a bit. So it means that these have swapped location and then that this code has jumped to its new higher memory location uh, and started executing out of there, leaving this area free to be filled with game code. So let's just see a demo of that real quick. And you'll see it swap, there you go. Okay, so now that I've got this card in here, uh, you can see when I turn it on, it shows the produced buyer under license from Sega Enterprises, which is false, but uh, that means it's booting up. And then you see nothing because all the actions happening around back and coming out, well, 
let me get my laptop. Okay, so we're all hooked up over here at the laptop. Um, I am going to use Minicom. As you can see, my device shows up as USB zero. Um, and as you can also see, I have set the baud rate at 4800 uh, because again, that's as fast as the Genesis serial port will go because uh, that's not really what it is intended for, but I'm using it this way anyway. It's also why transfers go super slow. But if we fire up Minicom, and then we come over here and turn this guy on. We'll get a little garbage and then we get this nice prompt <laughs> with one of my uh, really dumb studio names that I keep trying to come up with of what I'm gonna call myself. Very similar to my homebrew computer setup except uh, a little bit nicer because this one uh, I was actually able to write in C um, thanks to the 68K, which apparently I cannot stop talking about. I do love me a good 68K. Every time I use this, because I use it so infrequently, I have to go over to the source of the freaking monitor code and remember what the heck the commands are. I can remember the dump command, which is D uh, for dump, and then it will always dump uh, a word at a time. I have commands on here to uh, deal with bytes, but uh, I kind of just didn't implement them because the Genesis hardware, some locations don't like byte reads or writes. So I just, I just decided not to implement it. If I want to dump, uh, you know, the first, let's say 256 bytes of memory. So you put in the base you want to dump from zero, 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 zero. Shoot, I hope that's enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, cool. And then a uh, word. So 16 bits of length of how much you want to dump. Zero, zero, nope, I whiffed it. That's probably gonna complain, just like the last video. All right, let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a 32-bit address, zero, one, zero, zero. So that's dump 256 bytes, so that should dump 128 words, I think. And there you go, I assume that's it. So that is the first however much of RAM. So we have to remember now the RAM is mapped from zero to, I can't remember how much is in there. It might be like, uh, it might be like 128K. It's really not much, but I can, I think, let's try the right. So I think it's right word and then the location. So let me write it to zero. And I will just make that FFFF. -F -F. And then let's run our dump command again. Nope, I can't write. Dump, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, oh, one, oh. And as you can see, that didn't write anything. And that's what you get after waiting for two weeks, uh, the 30 some of you who are subscribed, to see a disappointing end but next time, maybe we'll try looking at this with the logic analyzer and or just try flashing a new build of the firmware to the ROM because maybe it's broken um, and get this thing working again. But in the meantime, after futzing with that for a freaking week, um, <laughs> I'll have you know, I didn't really futz with that for a week. I basically went, oh, so this doesn't work. And then I buzzed it out and then I went, Ugh. and then I didn't touch it for a while. And then I decided I should probably finish this in some way. And so you get the half-assing you're seeing here. But in the meantime, these arrived. I have more stuff coming because I can't help myself, but uh, those are 680-20s, and uh, the number that I do not know, but that is the MMU for those. So uh, just buying stupid crap for the project that I may or may not ever finish or start. Um, but I also have, and I'm very excited about, uh, some dual port SRAM coming in that that stuff is wicked expensive to buy. It's a PLCC because, you know, I like working with those. And um, it is real fast and 128K, it's 16 by 16K. So my thought is make a better graphics card. Maybe make it work with this junk. Maybe get Linux running on there, which would be a hoot. Or maybe some BSD or uh, yeah, and then write 
some kind of like with Linux, if I can get uh, Linux that I can make an FB dev device with, uh, and then make my simple frame buffer uh, into that dual port SRAM. Uh, this is all very lofty. This is all very lofty. So maybe I'll just make a series on trying to, you know, put in an hour of work each day on that. But um, that's what's going on. So now you know. So I'm sorry about the Genesis thing. I hope the concept was interesting. But um, that's where I will call it for today. So until we meet again, I will see you later.